Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head up to Bohus Lane in Jutaland to the north of Gothenburg and we've got another Swedish brewery who I've never tried anything from but this brewery are actually one of the older craft breweries in Sweden. They may be the oldest, I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm not sure if they're younger or older than Neunesheim's own breakery but for this one today we are going to review my first beer from Grevestad Brewery. So this one is their Lunatur Doppelbock. It comes in at 7.9% ABV and it got an 80 overall on rate beer. I should point out that this one is the 2016 edition. The 2017 edition has just been released through Sistian Balaga. They tend to release them every May, if I'm remembering correctly. But I always found with the German Doppel box, they were at their best when you left them in the bottle for a year. So that's why I kept this one aside to review for you. So I hope you guys enjoy my take on it and we'll see how we get on with this one. As far as I know, this is the only Doppel box that I've come across when I've been here in Sweden. So I'm really interested to see how these guys interpret the style. So yeah, it should be an interesting review. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, of course, just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Gravestod's Bravery. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, of course, there's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you, and that's constantly being added to, and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys, and the support you give the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Gravestad's Bravery then. So Gravestad's Bravery are based in Bohus Lane, as I told you, to in Newtaland, which is a little bit to the north of Gothenburg. It's supposed to be a really nice area of the country, actually, and I do need to explore that area a little bit. Um, probably I'll take a trip up to Oslo and kind of do that on the way sometime, but it's supposed to be very, very nice. But the company is owned by Ola Jonsson, who I believe has been involved with them since 2005, but he's also involved in the running of the Jutaburi's new uh, Neue Brewery, which he's been involved in for the last three years. So this brewery was actually founded back in 1994, and they have four big German copper kettles, and this allows them to produce over 600,000 litres of beer per year, and the current head brewer is Johan Hansson, and the brewery apparently is just a few metres from the sea. So it's meant to be, as I say, it's meant to be a very scenic area, and uh, they've got this brewery up there, which is one of the oldest craft breweries in Sweden, which is pretty cool actually, but I actually couldn't find all that much information on this brewery. I was googling around, finding out people's names, googling the names and everything like that, and I just really could not find very much about this brewery at all. So um, I guess that's something that, um, that hopefully they can fix in the future. Their website looked as if it hadn't been touched for about three or four years with the dates and things that were on the pages, so hopefully that's something that they update in the near future. But at least you know, at least I can tell you a little bit about it. But yeah, without further ado then, let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer itself. If you want to look at more on the brewery website and stuff, as I said to you, it's in the description below. So basically this little bit on the front here tells you that uh, it, it kind of says like, oh, we're we're based in Bohus Lane, which is next, which is in Utilin Peninsula. Uh, our brewery is a few meters from the sea, and it's talking about as well how we're one of the the, the sort of genuinely oh, the, the genuinely private microbreweries in Sweden. So I'm not sure what that's all about. That seems as if it's a little bit old and hasn't been updated because there has been a big boom in craft beer over in Sweden in the last couple of years. And it tells you on the back as well, the interesting point about this beer, and the reason that it's called Lunatur, is because they brew it at the time of the first full moon of the year, which is kind of cool. Because they, these beers, a Doppelbock needs about 12 weeks or so to kind of age in the bottles after you brew it. So this will be why we get it around May. It's probably ready um, around April time. So yeah, really quite interesting beer, this one. But yeah, brewed under the first full moon, hence the name Lunator. And the fact that it's called Lunator, if you think about like Augustine or Maximator, Ang or Celebrator, uh, Paulan or Salvatore, all these sorts of things, that's probably just a kind of tribute to the, the German Doppelbox, of course, giving it a name of this style. But yeah, as you can see, quite nicely presented. I do like the artwork on this one. There you can see the Grebestad Brewery bottle cap on this one. It looks, I think it's a lighthouse that's on it. Yeah, a lighthouse in the sea. Quite nicely presented. But uh, yeah, founded, Gravestar Brewery, it says founded 1995, but uh, the website that I saw, the Sveriges Microbreakery, was saying that it was 1994. So yeah, I told you a lie, it's 1995 where this brewery was founded, and this particular version is best before the 10th 
of 2017. So like I say, I always find that these Doppel box tend to be in their prime a year uh, after they've been in the bottle. So it has just been a little bit over that for this one. But we'll see how we get on. And when you open that up, you can smell some of these lovely kind of brown sugars coming out of it. You can see there was a big smoky opening to this one. We'll just have to be careful with this, I guess. There will be a good bit of carbonation, but you can see some of that lovely Doppelbock colour in this one. We'll maybe just leave it at that for the moment and pour the rest in a little bit later. But yeah, if I hold this beer up to the light, it's got that really nice dark kind of chestnutty ruby colour that you expect of this Doppelbock style. The head's really bubbly actually, which is kind of to be expected when it's been in the bottle for over a year. You will get a little bit more kind of carbonation out and things like that. But it's a love if I hold this beer up to the light, it's a lovely kind of uh, ruby colour. It looks really, really nice. So yeah, that's a fair way to describe this one. There's a solid one and a half finger of a frothy, beigey tan head. It is quite bubbly though, as I said, that's just because it's been in the bottle so long. There's one or two big bubbles of carbonation and a few little ones just going up towards the, the bottom of the head there. But it looks very, very nice. You can see there a really nice looking beer. And I can smell some of these lovely red fruits coming off this beer as I move it around and some nice kind of brown sugar as well. But let's take a closer look at the aroma and see how we get on. Oh yeah. It smells considerably sweeter. The, the caramel and stuff, the brown sugar that's coming out of this one for me isn't quite as dark as you'll come across with some of the German examples of the, uh, of the Doppelbock. This one to me smells distinctively more sweet. But yeah. It's, got, it's more leaning towards a light kind of caramel. There's a little bit of a biscuity character in there as well. Some sort of nice brown bready notes as well. Yeah, the brown, the brown bread just kind of underpins the, the whole aroma, if you like. So yeah, brown bread. There's a little bit of an almost nutty character in there as well. Some nice, sweet kind of brown sugars. Yeah, a little bit toasted as well, like I said, some biscuity notes. You can get a little bit of the kind of earthiness from the hop. I would, I would do suspect they've used German hops in this one because it is a German beer style, of course. So you can pick up a little bit of that earthiness out of this one. And you, if, if you know your English hops and your German hops, you can always tell the difference. The earthiness that you get from German hops is just a little bit lighter and it's almost a wee bit biscuity as well, which is quite interesting. It does definitely smell like German noble hops in this beer. And then you can smell just a little bit of that red fruity character. To me it's coming across as kind of figgy, but there is a little bit of raisin sharpness to it as well. But the aroma for me is definitely dominated by the, the sort of sweet caramel, the toasted character, and that kind of bread, that brown bready, kind of, it's almost like German rye bread actually that you're getting out of this one. That's what I always love about these Doppelbox styles. This one smells like it's going to be really good. So let's get the rest of it in and then we'll give this one a try then. As I always say, just take a little bit of time and mull over the aroma of your beer before you actually try it. But this is going to be really nice. The Germans, of course, always insist that their beers have a good head on them and this one it certainly is going to have that. So yeah, you can see the beer, it's got a little bit darker since I put the rest in, but you can see there's a lovely big beigey tan head on this one. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this beer then. So this one is the Lunatar from Gravestad Brewery up in Bohus Lane in Jutland here in Sweden. Skull. That's pretty nice, yeah. It does taste a little bit different from the uh, the German Doppelbox that I've had before. It's just, it, there's a, something that's just a little bit different about this one. Yeah. It's not, in some ways, it's just not quite as smooth as the German ones. It's got that big oily character to it. But the, the brown sugar's in this one. A lot of the brown sugar is there. But as I was picking up with the aroma, the, the way that the brown sugar has come across in this one to me is just a little bit different. It's a good beer though, I do like this. You can see that head's just faded away really quickly. But that's a good beer. I do like this one. There's a lot of complexity to this, so when you have this beer, make sure you sugar it around your palate and just let your whole mouth adjust to it, because there is quite a bit of stuff going on in this one. 
So yeah, let's try and analyse this now. So you've got that brown bready character just underpinning this beer all the way. It's got a, there's a little bit of almost a kind of a brown pale malt in this one, and on top of that you get some of this nice brown kind of it's almost like German rye bread, pumpernickel bread or something like that. You can really detect that just underpinning this beer. And then on top of that, you start to get a little bit of the, this kind of darker treacle molasses. And that's what makes me say this one's a little bit different. Usually, this one to me has a little bit of a roasted brown sugar character to it. It's not even just a little bit toasty. There is a good little bit of roasty character to this one, and that's what sets it apart for me from the German ones. The German ones are big, smooth, and syrupy. This one has a little bit more of a kind of roasty character to it, I think. But it's good. I do like that. There's a little bit of chocolate in this one. Just a very little bit. You can feel that bit of sweetness in the middle of your tongue. But really, it's a nice kind of smooth... Um, it's, an, it's, it's, it's mainly the brown sugars that are dominating this one. So like I said, it's got that roasty, kind of toasty, uh, treacle molasses sort of thing to it. As you move further and further into the aftertaste, it progresses into a slightly lighter caramel. And there's a little bit of a biscuity kind of grainy thing coming out in this one as well. There's a wee bit of an almost woody, spicy character to this. I'm not getting much in the way of, uh, of nuttiness like I was picking up in the aroma. It's more of a woody, spicy character that's coming out of this one as it progresses. But yeah, I mean, the main thing to take away from this is that it is a pretty damn nice, it's a pretty nice beer, this one. As I say, the thing that, for me, in terms of the malt base of this, the thing that sets it apart a little bit is that, for me, it's a little bit roasted in comparison to the German ones. I always find the German ones are a little bit smoother, and they've got that big, kind of, treacly sweetness to them. But, I mean, every beer is going to be unique. That's the main thing, and they've done a nice job with this. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. On the hoppy side of things, it's, uh, you know, it's German noble hops straight up. You can feel there's a little bit of bitter earthiness in the back corner of your palate as you come further forward. It smooths out and then there's just a tiny, tiny little bit of grassiness around the front curve of your tongue. You can feel it's very, very slightly floral at the front corners of your palate. But it has the typical notes you expect of these German noble hops like Hallertau, Tettnanger and all of these kind of things. And of course, the other aspect of these doppel box is the fruitiness. So just behind the front curve of your palate, that's where you get this little oily bubble. And that's where these lovely kind of red fruity esters come out in this one. This one has a little bit of a, a sharpness to it. I'd say it's kind of raisins and plums that are coming out of this one. And as it progresses, it kind of fades away a little bit. And that's when you start to get a more kind of figgy flavour out of it. So it's quite interesting, this one. There's a lot going on, but that's what you expect of a German Doppelbock. This is a style that I really love just because of its complexity. It's maybe my favourite German beer style, of course. Uh, the Weizenbock as well, and the Rauch beers, of course, are ones that I really enjoy. But probably, I guess probably if I had to pick after the Rauch beer, the, my favourite German style would be the Doppelbock. And I have to say, Grebestad have done a pretty nice job of this one. As I say, the thing that sets it apart a little bit from the German ones for me is that it's a little bit more roasted in the malt base than you'd perhaps find from the likes of uh, the celebra the Celebrator, the uh, Premator, the, uh, you know, all of these kind of German Doppelbocks. It's just a little bit more roasty in the malt base than, uh, than what I'm normally used to. So in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I would say this guy... It's kind of mid to full body, it's got a big oily mouthfeel, the carbonation is pretty smooth but because I've had this in the bottle for a year, it's got a little bit of a kind of bubbly character to it which isn't normally what you'd expect for a Doppelbock. This one does have a little bit more carbonation than you'd normally expect and even when I've aged the German ones, they don't quite have as much carbonation as this but I guess when it's a bit younger, it will be slightly smoother. Um, there's a big malty sweetness to this one. There's a little bit of bitterness from the hops, but really not very much at all. It's not going to blow your head in terms of bitterness. It's maybe only about 30 IBUs, if that. Um, and I would say it, it's got some nice fruity, juicy character to it as well. It's a big, oily beer, this one, but just with a little bit of carbonation. But that's probably due to the age that I've kept this one to. But overall, it's a really nice beer. The thing that sets it aside from the German Doppelbox 
is that it's a little bit more kind of roasted in the malt base rather than just being a kind of toasty caramel. But I have to say, I've enjoyed my first experience with Grey Bastard's Bravery, so I'm sure I will return to them in the fairly near future. So if you get the chance to try the, uh, the Lunatter from these guys, I highly recommend that you do. It's a really nice stock book, and to produce something of that quality um, outside of Germany, as a kind of mimic of the style. They've done a pretty good job at this, so big thumbs up to them. So it's been really cool to do my first review from these guys. I hope you've enjoyed my take on this beer. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Do let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below, and let me know what your favourite beers are from Grey Bastard's Bravery. Hopefully I can review a few of them in the next little while. But until the next time, it's will you just now, and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out Grey Bastard's Bravery from Bohus Lane up in Newtonland here in Sweden. They've done a really nice topple book here and I look forward to trying some more other things. Slanger just now and I'll catch you guys very soon. Let's go.